Hello Aries friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my January 10th, 2020 full moon lunar eclipse at 20 degrees of Cancer report for Aries. I'm going to go into lots of details about where you are likely to see the dramatic jaw-dropping changes, trajectory shifts, goodbyes, hellos, blissful beginnings, tearful endings, where you're likely to see these manifest from this January eclipse. We often see the eclipse manifestations even start to cook up four to six or more weeks before the actual eclipse, which is why I always post these early. This eclipse cycle started in the middle of 2018 and goes through the um, middle of 2020. So we're at the second to last chapter here with this December, January eclipse cycle, where more information is being given that has been sort of building over this time in these certain areas of life. So you'll notice the themes, as I mentioned, and that these have been taking place. I'm not talking about the December eclipse in this video. If you check out your November horoscope for Aries by me, then I go into lots of detail about where you can expect those eclipse manifestations, and those might start as early as October. So, um, I definitely have you covered either way. And usually I would incorporate this, what I'm doing here, into the regular videos for my monthly horoscopes, but I'm doing it separate as a bonus so that we don't have to take from time in that video. Okay, so eclipses bring these changes. I'm going to show you visuals about where you're likely to see this. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I add in visuals because I'm a teacher and I wanna show you why things may actually um, happen, not just what may happen. Sorry, I'm hard to get adjusted here. I'm in my RV still traveling, trying to get these things to you while I'm on the road. So um, now we're going to start this split screen. We've got a little grid here to show you where in the Aries spectrum you are, because as you'll see soon, this will become relevant. Early born, or basically our March born, are zero to nine degrees. Middle degrees, around April 1st through 10th, or 10 to 19 degrees late around April 11th through the rest of the sign or 20 to 29 degrees. If you have an Aries moon, Aries rising, Aries sun, this report is for you. And I always recommend that you watch reports for at least your rising sign and your sun sign if you know you're rising. I have Aries rising, so I'm there in the middle degree uh, report with you all. So I'm going through all of this stuff that I'm going to be describing along with you. So this window out my RV and that window out my RV and that window out my RV show three different views of what it's like to be here. And that's what the sun chart, the moon chart, the rising chart is like. They're, they're different viewpoints of the, the viewpoint of the stars that are true at the same time. So it just gives you more information to go in depth like that. Okay, so the overview here, Aries, January 2020, full moon, dramatic lunar eclipse at 20 degrees of Cancer. Cancer and Capricorn are... Um, cardinal signs. So is Aries, so is Libra. So Aries has been very much affected by this eclipse cycle since between, you know, the middle of 2018 through the middle of 2020, because 90 degree angles have been thrown at our Aries placements as these Cancer Capricorn eclipses are occurring. So some of the changes that we've been experiencing have been really stressful. And I know because I've been going through it with you, you know, some really, you know, um, life-changing events, for better and worse, have been up for us, and that is going to continue. Time of great change continues through the middle of 2020. It might take until fall of 2020 for some of those changes to like pan out or hash out, but we're really, really in this. So Aries placements from 15 to 25 degrees, I'm in there with you because I'm at 17, okay? And the closer to 20, the more intense. Okay, so all of you will have these potentials that I'm going to discuss, but those of us who are here in this 15 to 25 degree spectrum, closer to 20 degrees, the more powerful. So that's basically if we're looking at the, um, at the spectrum here, we're looking at like April 5th through April 15th for your birthdays. Um, are experiencing the, the biggest change here with around April 10th or so, the most changes. But if you're in that 5th through 15th, you know, or that 15 to 25, you're really in for some biggies here with me. But everybody has a chance for the changes, okay? So Aries tends to experience everything with more intensity. And part of that is because we have a natural chart, which means that 
the, the, the events that happen in a certain sign also in the ha happen in the house that rule that sign. All right, so all Aries placements will have a chance to experience this uh, eclipse in the fourth house, and actually all Zodiac members will have that chance in the fourth house. But it's more intense for Aries because not only are we experiencing it through the fourth house because Cancer rules the fourth house, we're also experiencing it in the fourth house. Now, if you're a late degree person, so if you're towards the end of the sign, you may also experience this in the third house. All right, so I'm just gonna show you really quick a visual about why Aries people experience these things with more intensity and also about these cardinal placements, why this is more intense for us. And then I'll get into the tutorials about how you're likely to see these changes or what areas of life. And these things are going, you know, my explanations are based on doing thousands of live readings, tracking these eclipses over time for myself for 20 years, and also doing horoscopes, in-depth horoscopes and eclipse reports for a very long time. Okay, so when we have a natural chart, that means that everything falls where it naturally would be. So the first house in the zodiac is the house of Aries. Aries people have Aries things happen there. So it's like Aries to the nth degree in the first house. And, and, and that continues down the line. So when we have a Cancer occurrence, that Cancer occurrence, Cancer rules the fourth house, but it's also happening in the fourth house. So it's just like everything is double. Everything is intensified. These signs here, Aries, Libra, Capricorn, Cancer, are the cardinal signs. They're the ones that instigate. They're the ones where the seasonal changes. So Aries, you know, um, is the spring, or at least in, you know, our part of the hemisphere, and it's reverse for y'all down under. But the, the seasonal changes are lined up with these cardinal signs. Okay, so the things that bring about, you know, instigate. So this eclipse cycle has been happening in this Cancer Capricorn. That means it's been making 90 degree angles to um, Aries and Libra placements. Those are the pressure angles. Those are the angles that make the diamonds. So the, the diamonds are under the earth, the pressure, 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 pressure. And then all of a sudden there's this beautiful sparkly diamond. But it's pressure and it's like, it's dividing you and it's making you feel like you're being pulled. I call it being drawn and quartered in the square. Like your arms going this way, your arms going that way, your legs are going all these different ways. So this is going to be intense, but it doesn't have to be bad. And you will likely have some understanding of what's at play here, because this continuum has been occurring, um, you know, since the middle of 2018. So when we look at the middle degree chart and we look at the 20 degrees of Cancer, that's still happening in the fourth house. When we look at with the late degree chart, it is also likely going to happen in the fourth house, but see how this, it drops back. So that's like on this line for you late degree people. That's why the third house possibility is brought in for the people who are later in the sign. Okay, so now I'm going to drop in a tutorial about how I've seen these things manifest, these things, <laughs> these eclipses manifest in the fourth house, so what you're likely to see. So all Aries, you watch that. For my super impatient Aries, if you're not a late degree person and you're not interested, you can sign off after that fourth house tutorial. The third house tutorial is specific for the late degree people. Okay, so eclipses tend to bring changes in trajectory, new opportunities coming to fruition of things in process, surprises, drama, bright openings, notable things in the forefront of home and family and some other headers. So we're going to look at some common ways that I have seen the fourth house um, or cancer eclipses manifest. Home and housing. So many, 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 many people will move during an eclipse cycle where there's a fourth house or cancer eclipse, moving to a new place. Some people, this will include like a bi-location or a multiple location. Like if you have a house already, you can set up a second residence or a different residence in addition to the one you already have. For some people, it manifests as just a complete clean different move. Sometimes it's a temporary move or a temporary change in housing. Um, this energy very much can rule sales, you know, or sales or purchases of homes, getting a home ready for sale, um, purchasing a new home. Even though eclipse time very often brings these into the forefront, definitely always pay attention to the other information I give for the horoscopes at that time to understand how other transits that can be occurring at the same time as the eclipse season can interfere or 
um, enable uh, contractual arrangements and big steps. Very often a fourth house eclipse will have to do with the changing of occupancy within your home. So let's say you're there and you stay there and the house is the same, but someone moves out or someone moves in. Or you start using your home for home-based business. Uh, the starting of a home-based business is very common. Um, at bringing on, you know, an Airbnb um, or any other home-based business where you're working online. Making repairs or making additions or changes to the home. And again, with these kind of things, definitely pay attention to the other aspects of the time because, you know, minor repairs can be fine at any time, but if you're going to do major additions, there are other astrological factors that I always speak to in the horoscopes that can be relevant. But I do see these eclipses tend to bring movement along um, these fronts with things like this. Changes in or notable things going on in family, and that's your family that you live with or your family that you came from. Drama, um, solutions, healings, you know, people getting married. So there's new entrances to the family, people having separations, children, new children coming into the family. I see a focus on ancestry and genealogy come up very often in this. You might find out you have a relative that, you know, is notable. Um, you might connect with someone in your genealogy. You may become really interested in tracking your ancestry or genealogy, or someone may contact you. Um, childhood psychology is another thing I see come up. There are rhythms at, at play in our lives and if you, and, and things tend to be cyclical. So the things that you're experiencing now, a lot of the ways that you feel right now, you felt as a child and that had to do with childhood imprinting and many other factors, but the relationship between what you're experiencing now and what happened as a child and possibly even prior to, if you believe in past lives or if you believe in genetic memory manifesting as our experience. So, you know, attention to what's happening now as it relates to the past and doing inner work to help stop the cycles for yourself and your family. So that I see that often come up with the fourth house eclipses or cancer eclipses. So in general, with the fourth house or cancer eclipse, be prepared to focus on your inner world um, or the things closest to you, like home level, family level, history, and your emotional or inner space. Eclipses bring major changes, major news, and major events. And although sometimes we observe other people having the changes and we're holding space for them, very often we are the ones that are having the changes when the eclipses occur in these certain placements. When there's an eclipse in the third house or Gemini, one of the sectors of life that is very much brought into the forefront is communication. So this can be interpersonal communication, the way that you relate to others, your communication style. Um, I very often will talk on this topic about how our nervous system has been imprinted with the tones, with the, the things said and not said by our parents or primary, um, you know, child rearers that get laced into our way of talking. And so going deeper into how, well, actually, you know, in many cases, violence is just imprinted in to our language, whether it's passive aggressive or, you know, if a parent is stressed and it goes into the speech and the kid gets imprinted with it, then it rolls into our communication style. So in depth opportunities to look at how we're communicating. And again, you know, I mean, this comes up at this time, but it, it has to do a lot of times with how we experience someone else. So if someone else, if we think they're being harsh or they're not being fair or they're being, you know, um, in a certain way, sometimes those can, things can serve as reflectors for us at this time about our own personal communication patterns. And the more we can own that if we're having communication issues with other people, that we can own our part of it and where it came from and how we're attracting it in, the more we can uh, use the opportunity that comes at this time with the eclipse cycle. So interpersonal communications, I always like to recommend the book, um, Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg, where he um, outlines this plus a plan to, um, to shift it. I really love this 
his work because he, he gets people together that are basically warring with each other, sometimes very seriously warring with each other, gets them in the same room, teaches them this communication um, system in, you know, to, in order to help people get better outcomes to reach common goals with their communication. So that's a big one that I see. Devices are another part of this. So, you know, issues with devices, dropping phones in toilets, um, you know, having new devices, having to have them or choosing to upgrade or any kind of change with communication, anything having to do with systems, you know, your system of communication with people. So how, you know, email, um, you know, ways that you go texting, ways that you go about communicating. So notable things occurring there or changing how you relate to those particular um, ways. Something else that comes up a lot with third house eclipses and Gemini eclipses is transportation and mobility. So the modes of transportation, issues with a car or other vehicle, um, getting new ones. And again, you know, I always talk about this. This eclipses often bring in new devices or transportation uh, pieces, but definitely also pay attention to the, the, the time that it's occurring. So, you know, if it's a personal planet retrograde, which I speak to more in the, in the horoscopes, um, you know, it may not be the time to voluntarily make a purchase, but if you can just, you know, watch the general transits as they relate to the eclipse season and time your purchases if possible, um, that can be helpful. But in general, this topic will come up. It's a time to not ignore when your car is doing something weird. You know, that's the bottom line. It's a time to make a pledge to not text and drive and remember that before we could text and drive, we didn't. So therefore we still can <laughs> manage to get from place to place without texting or, or even talking on the phone, anything that can interfere with the driving because this energy can increase the energy of accidents. Um, and so even if you're walking or, or biking, you know, avoiding, um, being distracted while those things are happening, you know, look, to, you know, ha, uh, be extra careful with your physical body as it relates to other people moving and you moving around. This energy also has to do with um, physical mobility. So if there's been an injury, you know, sometimes there's an injury from the eclipse or, or related to the eclipse, or sometimes there's a healing moving along a, um, a continuum of regaining mobility, a different chapter of mobility. Writing and editing and some different aspects of, of um, your expression can come up at this time. So writing projects um, and opportunities. Also, relatives that aren't parents or kids are related to the third house in Gemini. So cousins, siblings, aunts, uncles, things like that are in this house. So notable connections with these people or opportunities or progress along a continuum can often come in as a uh, third house eclipse chapter. Gemini can also relate to social settings. Um, and some aspect of, you know, relating in a social scene. So notable interactions in the social scene um, can also come up at this time. So a quick summary of some of the ways to best use this energy is to respond to the things that occur. Um, you know, so if there's a symptom, if something's going on, you know, look into it. Pay attention to the opportunities that come and take them seriously. And follow your hunches in these areas. Make a promise to yourself for accountability. So, you know, ask yourself what, how you are the common denominator in your interactions and do whatever is relevant to the situation to own your part and to work with your part of the dynamic. Pay extra special attention as you're moving around and have much, much extra care and extra focus and be prepared to blow the dust off of old writing projects or start new writing projects or get down into the, um, cleaning up of, of, you know, communications or other writing projects that have, um, already been in process. 
I hope you feel very prepared now for eclipse season and understanding what kinds of changes may be ahead for you. Definitely go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, to check out all of my astrology blogs and all of my other goodies there, including when you sign up for my free email newsletter, you will get a month early, a written general transit report, including all of the notable aspects, the dates of the aspects, and what you can expect from each. And you'll also get my 28-day virtual coaching program called Shine for free when you sign up for my free email newsletter, besides other goodies there. If you want written horoscopes by me, go to cozybysweetstarlight.com, and all of the links that I give you are also in the notes underneath. If you just click more underneath the video, you'll see all the websites there. So at cozybysweetstarlight.com, I have lifestyle blogs for healthy living, and I also have written horoscopes, again, up one month early, so you can check out what else is going on for your sign one month early. If you'd like to learn astrology and you resonate with how I teach, then definitely check out my astrology apprenticeship program, also at AnnieHelpsYou.com. I hope you have a wonderful month, and I hope you have a wonderful eclipse season. Definitely check out my horoscopes, my individual horoscopes for each sign for you um, on my YouTube channel, Annie Botticelli YouTube. You can check out my monthly reports. I always have them up a month early. And definitely also check out the November report because I do talk about the December eclipse and its manifestations in there. And those eclipse manifestations can echo out, you know, January, February, even March beyond. So to have a good understanding about where the first eclipse hit, you can check out my November report where I go into lots of details about that for you. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.